Thank you so much. I request our honorable chief guest and all the dignitaries to take their seats. And I also request faculty members, students, and guests to resume their seats. Chief guest, honorable vice president, Shri Jagdeep Dhankar, Minister of State, Shri Brijesh Singh, Chairperson, Board of Governors, Srimati Jai Shri Mohata, Members of the Board, Shri Vikash Kandoi and Dr. Ajit Ranade, Director Bimtech, Dr. Prabina Rajib, Registrar, Deans, Faculty, Staff Members, Bimtechians, past and present, and the graduating class of 2024. We feel honored, enthused, and inspired by your gracious presence here this fine evening on the momentous occasion of BIMTEC's 36th Annual Convocation 2024 for the graduating doctoral fellows and postgraduates. To all of you, swagatam, khushamudid, and a warm welcome. We commence the proceedings of this auspicious ceremony with the national anthem. May I request all present to please rise and join in its rendition. Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Uttara, Vanga, Vindya, Himachal, Yamuna, Ganga, Uchala, Jaladhi, Taranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Ashish, Mage, Gahe, Tava, Jaya, Thank you so much. Please resume your seats. May I now request Chairperson, Board of Governors, and other dignitaries on the dais to kindly initiate the auspicious lamp lighting ceremony with our Chief Guest, Honorable Vice President, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar. Thank you, sir and madam. We are privileged to welcome the venerable chief guest in our BIMTECH tradition. May I request Srimati Jai Shri Mohta, Chairperson, Board of Governors, BIMTECH, to please welcome the honorable chief guest and present floral greetings and a memento symbolizing our respect and gratitude to him. Thank you, sir. BIMTECH has been honored by your august presence here this evening.
a token of our gratitude to esteemed chief guest. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together. Thank you so much, sir and madam. I take this opportunity to cordially welcome our chairperson, Srimati Jayashree Mohta. May I now request her to kindly deliver the welcome address. Good evening and namaste to all present here. On this momentous occasion of the 36th Convocation Ceremony of the Billa Institute of Management and Technology, on behalf of the Board of Governors, I heartily welcome our Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankarji. The Bimtek family is indeed grateful for you, for your presence, August presence here. I feel very happy that you have agreed to come here. On a friendly note, just digressing from the main uh, graduation topic, I would like to mention here how fondly we Kolkatans remember you during your tenure as governor of West Bengal. You would go to any function wherever you were invited and your presence there would fill the, the, fill the place with a lot of joy and happiness. You were a most friendly governor, sir and we miss you. Thank you for being here today. I'm proud to be here to witness the graduation of the Diploma Awardees of PGDM 2023-2025 and the Doctoral Scholars. My greetings to our esteemed members of the dais, BOG members, Saket Khetan and Mr. Vikash Kandoi, Director Dr. Prabina Rajiv, Dean Academics and Deputy Director, Mr. Pankaj Priya, Registrar Dr. A.V. Shukla, and Dean Student Welfare, Ms. Dr. Abhijit Chattoraj. I take this opportunity to also welcome senior academicians, alumni, corporate leaders, members of Greater Noida, and Delhi Ad Administration, the media fraternity, and all the guests who have joined us here today. First, my congratulations and gratitude to all the parents and guardians for trusting BIMTEC for their ward's education. I would also like to express my utmost respect to the guiding lights, our accomplished faculty, alumni, and business leaders who left no stone unturned in nurturing the students and grooming them to be corporate ready throughout their two years of learning at BIMTEC. The outcomes are clearly visible in the placement records and other ac accomplishments of the students who are graduating today with flying colors adorned with medallions for exceptional achievements. Walking on the footprints of my parents, late Basant Kumar and Sadla Billa, our family lives by the mantra, you get in life what you give, one of my mother's favorite quotes. Perhaps that's what led them to set up several educational institutions because only education can create a world. With their blessings, BIMTEC has become a name to reckon with in the field of management, not only in India but abroad as well. 
This was possible only because of the students who are, who are our true ambassadors across the globe. They stand testimony to the quality education and holistic development imparted at the Institute. I feel immensely proud to have witnessed sev several success stories of our, graduated, of our graduates across the past three and a half decades. Our alumni have contributed valuably in their various roles in business, academia, entrepreneurship, and social sectors. Thus, we could achieve milestones like being ranked among the top 50 institutes of the country by NIRF, AACBE, International Accreditation, and establishing one of the best Atal Incubation Center. Dear students, I would like to tell you that the future of not only BIMTEC, but also of our country, India, is in your hands. Remember to be ever grateful for having received the best education and resources. Many do not still have this privilege. You have the power to change the world and hence utilize all the knowledge and skills received to contribute to improving the lives around you. Keep evolving and gain new skills so that you remain relevant despite all the changes that you will in in encounter in your business and personal lives. As you graduate today, you will soon get a taste of the real life. You will, you will be responsible for all the decisions. You may encounter ruthless competition from peers, and many times it will not be easy at all. I had learned from my father that there is no need to talk about your achievements or wear your ambitions on your sleeve. Instead, choose to let your work do the talking. That will bring you a lot of respect in life. As you adorn the head of a corporate citizen today, I pray that you get to lead a highly meaningful life ahead. May you get all the opportunities to pursue your passion. While you may be motivated by profits, I urge you also to never lose sight of purpose. Never leave the sides of the people who have made you. As you now become a proud alumni, the Bimtik family shall be looking up to you to steer your alma, alma mater to higher great heights. My best wishes for, the, for your bright, happy, healthy, and dignified future. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. I now request Director BIMTEC, Dr. Prabina Rajib, to commence the proceedings of the 36th Annual Convocation 2024. I request Chairperson Board of Governors to declare the 36th Convocation 2024 open for the graduating doctoral fellows and PGDM batch of 2024. I declare the 36th and annual convocation 2024 open for the doctoral fellow and PGDM batch of 2024. Thank you, we at BIMTEC constantly endeavor to scale new heights and reach new milestones to present a kaleidoscope of events and achievements for the academic year 2023-24, I would now request our director, Dr. Prabina Rajib, to please present BIMTEC's annual report. Honorable Vice President of India, Sri Jagdeep Dhankar, Sri Brijay Singh, 
Minister of State, Government of Uttar Pradesh, Chairperson, Board of Governance, BIMTEC, Srimati Jayashri Mohata, ma'am, Member of Board of Governors, Sri Vikas Kandoi, and Dr. Ajit Ranade, Deans, faculty and staff colleagues, students, parents, eminent guests, ladies and gentlemen. As the director of BIMTEC, I take this opportunity to present the annual report. This report provides a synopsis of some of the highlights that have propelled us throughout the year. I feel immensely happy and proud to share with all of you that our PGDM flagship program has been awarded NBA full accreditation for six years. <laughs> Only yesterday we came to know about this announcement by National Board of Accreditation. A six-year NBA accreditation signifies rigorous adherence to quality, confirming sustained excellence in curriculum, faculty, infrastructure, and student outcomes. It is the highest recognition reflecting a steadfast commitment to academic excellence and continuous improvement. Embracing a healthy gender diversity among students and faculty has been one of the BIMTEC's philosophy. You would be happy to note that the graduating batch has a healthy gender ratio of approximately 42% of women candidates. This number makes BIMTEC among handful of business schools in India to have this healthy number of women candidates. In addition to offering education to approximately 1,000 students, I'm proud to inform you that we have 40 international students from seven different countries in our two-year full-time PGDM program. This, these students come from countries such as Nepal, Bangladesh, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Syria, Trinidad and Tobago, and Russia. Not only do these students contribute to cross-cultural exchanges and global diversity, but they also excel academically. I'm very happy to share that Mr. Nilesh Shah, a graduating student who is from Nepal, has achieved the honor of being one of the gold medalists. I take pride in stating that according to government statistics, BIMTEC stands as one of the rare standalone institution boasting a substantial population of international students and remarkable diversity across countries. Another feather in our cap is the agreement signed between Singapore Management University and BIMTEC. As part of this agreement, BIMTEC students joined the prestigious, inclusive, and immersive experiential learning program of Singapore Management University. This intensive week-long program offered a unique blend of academic rigor and, more importantly, opportunity for our students to work on live projects given by Singapore companies. We are working towards strengthening this relationship with Singapore Management University so that we can offer the same, number, same opportunity to more number of BIMTEC students in the next years to come. The success of any academic institution is measured by the quality of research. I'm delighted to report that there has been steady increase in number of research publications being made by BIMTEC fraternity, including faculty, research scholars, and students. We have had 46 Scopus indexed articles in 2022, which has increased to 89 in 2023. And so far, we have published 
64 articles in 2024 in the first four months of the year. Another critical aspect of any business school is the career opportunity it provides to students. BIMTECH continues to be one of the India's top B schools for companies for recruitment. This year, we had 140 companies representing diverse sectors like consultancy, financial services, FMCG, insurance, information technology, visited campus to recruit our students. On this point, I would like to highlight that 30% of the companies visited our campus for the first time. I would like to give a glimpse of the placement statistics. Highest national package for our student is 22 lakhs per annum. <laughs> Average package for top 25% student is about 19.50 lakhs per annum. All PGDM, insurance business management, and international business students have been placed. We are committed to, we are committed and making sincere effort led by CCR team to place the remaining few students. Now coming to summer internship, we have been able to secure 100% of summer internship placement. <laughs> to encourage our student in, to encourage our student to excel in academics as well as extracurricular activities, we give many scholarships and awards. In this year, we have given let GD Birla Academic Merit Scholarship Awards and we have distributed about 24 lakh rupees worth of scholarship to various students who have achieved academic excellence. <laughs> Faculty re research grant, for that we have spent about 67 lakh to promote quality research. We have also instituted best researcher and best teacher award. To improve our infrastructure, we recently added a complete academic block comprising of 35 faculty rooms, large classrooms, four large classrooms, and one seminar hall with 300 sitting capacity with the state-of-the-art facility. We are also focusing on our improving our library resources. To summarize, I would like to highlight Great acts are made up of small deeds. Let me repeat, great acts are made up of small deeds. Every single day we are working towards making BIMTEC one of the finest academic institution in India. We will continue to strive hard and maintain and pursue highest integrity in everything we do at BIMTEC. To highlight one of the core principles which we have followed diligently is to give admission to only meritorious candidates. Let me repeat here. To highlight one of the core principles which we have followed diligently, we will be giving admission to only meritorious candidates. At BIMTEC, under the able guidance of Chairperson of Board, Srimati Jayashree Mohta, ma'am, as well as all other board members, myself as director, my faculty and staff colleagues, and students as a singular group will conduct ourselves with utmost integrity and sincerity to make BIMTEC, to take BIMTEC to the next height. I will conclude my annual report presentation to all of you by quoting Mahatma Gandhiji, the father of our nation. The future depends on what we do it in present. And all of us at BIMTEC are going to be the change maker and 
to make BIMTEC one of the finest academic institution in India. With this, I thank all of you. Thank you, ma'am. May I now request Chairperson, Board of Governors, Director, and Registrar to kindly initiate the Diplomas and Medals Award ceremony. Let the candidates be presented. Ma'am, I present to you one candidate in person for the PhD, seven candidates in person for the fellow program in management and executive fellow program in management. The scholars have been examined and found worthy of the award of the fellowships. Scholars may now be awarded the fellowship. I now request the recipients of the doctoral program, the fellow program in management, and the executive fellow program in management to please rise and keep standing till the exhortation by the chairperson board of governors to the BIMTEC awardees is over. By virtue of the authority vested in me, as the chairperson of the Board of Governors of BIMTEC, I admit you to the fellow program in management and executive fellow program in management and charge you to prove worthy of this fellowship in your life and works. Ma'am. I present to you 240 candidates in person for the postgraduate diploma program in management, 23 candidates in person for the PGDM insurance business management, 38 candidates in person for PGDM retail management, and 60 candidates in person for the PGDM international business, and 117 candidates in absentia for the EVA programs in the two-year full-time program. These scholars have been examined and found worthy of the award of the diploma. They may be awarded the diploma. I now request the diploma recipients of all the four programs present here to please rise and keep standing till the exhortation by the Chairperson Board of Governors, BIMTEC, to the awardees is over. By virtue of the authority vested in me as a chairperson of the Board of Governors of the Bidla Institute of Management Technology, I admit you to the postgraduate diploma in management, PGDM, PGDM insurance business management, PGDM retail management, and PGDM international business, two years full-time programs and charge you to be worthy of the diploma in your life and works. The candidates of all four PGD programs may now please resume their seats. Chairperson, Madam, I present the records pertaining to the candidates who have been conferred their diplomas in this convocation for your signature as Chairperson Board of Governors. Thank you, madam, for your signatures. All the scholars from the fellow programs and the PGDM programs who have been conferred their diplomas 
may now please rise from their seats to take a pledge of their ethical conduct to be administered by our Dean Academics. May I request Dr. Pankaj Priya, Dean Academics, to administer the pledge. As the graduating batch of 2024 moves on from being BIMTECH students to becoming BIMTECH alumni, we hope that they will continue to live by the credo of the alma mater, that is excellence with values in their personal and professional lives. All diploma recipients are now requested to join me in taking the pledge of ethical conduct. I shall first read it and you will repeat it after me. Please take out the script of the pledge given to you in your folder at the time of registration. The script of the pledge is also displayed on the screen. Let us now proceed with the pledge. We solemnly pledge to conduct our business, occupation, social and personal dealings in such a way that would create value responsibly and ethically so as to contribute to the common good of all stakeholders without causing any harm or damage to the environment and the society at large. All the diploma recipients may now resume their seats. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. I would now request our honorable chief guest to kindly award medals to the students who have achieved academic excellence or all-round excellence in various programs during the academic session 2022-24. For this, I request the honorable chief guest and all the dignitaries to kindly come in front of the dais for the medal award ceremony. I am pleased to invite the medal awardees to the dais to receive their certificates medals from our honorable chief guest according to the sequence in which I shall announce their names. Gold medal for securing first position in academics in postgraduate diploma in management program is awarded to Nitesh Shah. The next gold medal for securing first position in academics, PGDM International Business Management Program is awarded to Ritika Shirvastav. Ritika is from Insurance Business Management. Gold medal for securing first position in academics in PGDM retail management program is awarded to Sanskriti Khare. Gold medal for securing first position in academics in PGDM International Business Program 
is awarded to Anchal Mittal. Special medal for securing first position in marketing specialization stream is awarded to Devyanshi Khandilwal. Special medal for securing first position in operations specialization is awarded to Parth Agarwal. Special medal for securing first position in finance specialization stream is awarded to again Nitish Shah. Special medal for securing first position in HR specialization stream is awarded to Agam Mishra. This is Nitesh Shaha. And now we have Agam Mishra. Dr. C.B. Gupta Memorial Medal instituted in memory of BIMTEC's founder-director, late C.B. Gupta, for all-round best performance amongst male students is awarded to Shashwat Tandon. Srimati Yashoda Jaju Medal, Srimati Yashoda Jaju Memorial Medal, instituted in memory of late Yashoda Jaju, who was very close to our BIMTEC family, for all-round best performance among female students, is awarded to Kriti Singh. Each year, BIMTEC confers two special awards, Dr. Jagdish Shet Award of Rs. 50,000 for the best doctoral thesis and Srimati Madhuri Shet Award of Rs. 25,000 each to a female student topper of the PGDM program and the PGDM International Business Program. The awards have been instituted jointly by BIMTEC and Padma Bhushan Dr. Jagdish Shet Professor Emeritus of Marketing at the Emory University Business School in the U.S. May I now request our Honorable Chief Guest to confer these awards upon the recipients whose names I will now read out. The awardees are now invited to come to the dais to receive their certificates and cash awards from our Chief Guest. Dr. Jagdish Seth Award 2023 for the best thesis is awarded to Dr. Ashutosh Kumar. <laughs> Srimati Madhuri Seth Award to Female Topper in the PGDM Program 2022-24 batch is awarded to Aisha Asija.
presented to you, sir, is Aisha Asija. The second Srimati Madhuri Seth Award to a female topper of the PGDM International Business Program 2022-24 batch is awarded to, again, Achal Mittal. Achal Mittal. I now request the chief guest and all the dignitaries to kindly take their seats. It's a matter of privilege to have amidst us Honorable Vice President Sri Jagdeep Dhankar as our chief guest for the 36th Annual Convocation 2024. Please put your hands together as I now invite our esteemed chief guest to deliver the 36th Convocation Address. Good evening, all of you. Ever since in my capacity as Chairman Rajya Sabha, we passed the Women Reservation Bill in September 2023, providing for one-third of reservation for women in Lok Sabha and State Assemblies. I am very fortunate. I am coming more frequently across institutions managed by women. <laughs> JNU Vice Chancellor, I was there, happened to be a woman. Gujarat University Vice Chancellor, happened to be a woman. IIM, both Gaya, woman. And now, not one but two. Very distinguished. Jai Shri Mohtaji, Chairperson, Board of Governors of Bidla Institute of Management and Technology. Friends, you know it. She is an outstanding contributor to education system in the country. Now for over four decades, since 1980, she has exemplified with simplicity, modesty, and sublimity focus in education focus in education at all levels and is spread out even in tier three cities. That's the perfect concept of trusteeship, giving back to the society what you have been fortunate to get for yourself. I have no doubt, and we have a feel-good factor for BIMTEC, under her stewardship, this institute is bound to be on incremental trajectory. As Vice President of the country and Chairman Rajya Sabha, may I invite your faculty and your students to visit new building of parliament and we'll have the occasion to interact there also. I carry very fond memories of having had the honor to virtually participate during COVID era in two programs that involved her at the peak. And they reflected wisdom, knowledge, and our commitment to culture. Ma'am, I'm grateful for making available this great opportunity to me to be with you all on this occasion. Sri Vikas Kandoi, I have had instant connect with him. 
the young man should be taking the baton with his passion and mission i am sure the institute will see the best of him and the best of contribution that is need of contemporaneous times dr ajit rani ji member board of governors vice chancellor gokhale institute of politics and economics pune we have met before electrifying experience our relationship will continue to be nurtured either side your presence in the board means a lot dr prabina rajib don't go by her simple appearance she is a tough lady you can't have an admission in this institute by patronage she has demolished privileged pedigree she has course admissions on merit and therefore may not be palatable to the segment to which i belonged at one point of time but ma'am carry on we need it because for youth of this country meritocracy has to prevail and only meritocracy has to prevail shri brijesh singh ji minister of state pwd government of up the largest state of the union bharat home to one sixth of humanity a state that of late has seen massive transformation and earned a name for itself be it in defense exports infrastructure or quality of governance i have given him a small homework and i'm sure brijesh ji will do that i have told him i am in the habit of checking and that's my message to the honorable chief minister through him well friends my experience as a chancellor of several universities and also visitor by virtue of being governor of state of west bengal the registrar of every institution is is spinal strength the registrar helps in doing work or is stopping it from from being done we have in mr av shukla a man who is always in affirmative stance which results in wholesome governance of this institute sri pankaj priya ji deputy director bimtech infrastructure is only one of the facets of an institution and that is easily creatable these days but the philosophy the ethical standards the directional approach is determined by the faculty is a delightful situation that bimtech has enormously talented faculty and that is the strength boys and girls will ever cherish your faculty young friends may have been tough on occasions may have given you sleepless nights or pain in the neck on occasions at all your life you will remember that their toughness was always for your advantage parents who may be present here distinguished audience and my dear boys and girls the students of bimtech for me it's a great pleasure to be at the 36th convocation of the prestigious bimtech so this is an institution where the chairperson jayshree mota is taking forward legacy of a family that has contributed in field of education selflessly has always been on the guard to see that it does not graduate to commerce and therefore i have no doubt the institute in changing times will change for the better grapple with the opportunities that lie ahead 
friends there is obvious expectation from anyone in a convocation when he or she delivers an address that's very tough it's a tough challenge what advice need to be given what suggestions to be made they expect pearls of wisdom to emanate from the speaker i would make a modest endeavor i seek to focus in particular on contemporaneous ground reality and how your adventurism henceforth be productive for you and our bharat my young friends as graduates of this institution you will now take a leap in larger public domain in full preparedness your degree requires you to be team players problem solvers possess presentation and communication skills besides having analytical mind completing a program of this nature requires discipline knowledge and tenacity you all have demonstrated this my congratulations to each of you to your parents and to the distinguished members of the faculty friends in whatever field you may seek to work be it part of the developing india story or be contributing in global scenario i can assure you the story is full of promise we are in times where india is on the upsurge india is a land of hope and possibility friends the graduates could not have found a more better time than now to take the larger leap the next 25 years in our amrit kal as prime minister has underlined will define the position of bharat in the global committee of nations our strength is our youth you are the most vital stakeholders in governance in the future you are possessed of high qualifications you have been nurtured well you have been unable to contribute the very best for the nation for the society and for yourself i have no doubt you are future leaders of this country the creators of positive change driving economic technological and social progress friends i was a young person at one point of time so were others here faculty members but we had an ecosystem that was troubling that was painful we were having a difficult terrain we did not see light at the end of the tunnel you are very fortunate you are living in bharat that is on unprecedented exponential rise this rise is unstoppable take for instance our economy in 1989 i was elected to lok sabha from jhunjhunu a constituency which the family has well nurtured in academic field my young friends you may not be aware i was a minister also then the size of indian economy in 1990 was smaller than the size of economy of cities like london and paris can you imagine that was the time to sustain our global credibility when our foreign exchange was fluctuating around 1 billion dollars our gold in physical form had to be taken to be placed in two swiss banks and where are we now unbelievable spectacular progress has taken place during your school days just a decade ago 
India was counted globally as part of fragile five economies. An economy that was cause of concern not only to the nation, but to the global fraternity. Just in a decade, facing headwinds, negotiating difficult terrain, coming out of mood of despondency, India has emerged as the fifth largest global economy. We are ahead of Canada, Brazil, UK and France. Friends, in next two, three years, our Bharat, home to one-sixth of humanity, the mother and oldest democracy on the planet, civilization ethos of more than 5,000 years, would be number three global economy ahead of Japan and Germany. This is the ecosystem you will be facing outside. Friends, all these developments were unthinkable when I was young. All these developments I could not even dream of. I could not aspire. For you, this ecosystem is ground reality. Friends, I had indicated I'll be saying how the, this institute has to change keeping in the need of times. Disruptive technologies, we have to live with them. They have become part of life, part of your office space where, we, where you'll be going in corporates or having your own startups. Artificial intelligence, internet of things, machine learning, blockchain and the kind. They offer challenges, they offer opportunities. It is expected of you to be abreast of the latest technology, employed for national gain, and you'll be surprised pleasantly that India is amongst few countries in single digit that are focusing on quantum computing with already an allocation to the commission of 6,000 crores. For people like you who will be going to corporates be part of management, the green hydrogen mission with a location of 19,000 crores is already in place. It has potential, my young friends, by 2030 to generate employment of six lakh people with investment of eight lakh crores. You have to be the real players in game. Let me come to 6G. People of my generation think 5G and 6G is part of using a mobile phone. But you know it. It's a great commercial activity, a great potential. India is among few countries that will be taking on commercial utilization of 6G from 2025 to 2030 in phase two. Friends, this is a big change. And you have all the possibility potential to exploit it for your gain, for gain of your family, your friends, society, and the nation at large. is a big change. The second big change, a transformational welcome change, equality before law. There was a time people thought we are above law. We are beyond the reach of law. We are not accountable to law. Just imagine how painful it will be for young minds. And in a democracy where they are living, they are breathing, right to equality is eluding them. Now those who thought they are privileged pedigree, those who thought they are beyond the reach of law, the long arm of law is around their neck as a ground reality. That's your greatest benefit that you have equal rights, equal accountability. Earlier you had equal rights in measure, but there were others who could steal mileage over you. No longer patronage, nepotism, favoritism can be password for a contract opportunity or a job. Meritocracy alone prevails. Transparency and accountability are the new norms 
This is another big gain you have seen. Friends, a third, and that is very vital for young minds like you. Nothing worked without corruption. Power corridors were infested by lies and agents, power brokers. There was extra legal leveraging of decision making. But now those power corridors have been sanitized. There is zero accommodation for corruption. And this goes to the advantage of nationalist people, people who have love for their job, for their country. There is nothing now that you will carry around your waist as dead weight while swimming in the larger domain after you have graduated from here. There is an ecosystem in place, and that system allows you to fully exploit your talent and potential, realize your dreams and aspirations. I'm sure you will avail of the opportunity. Friends, there is manifestation of big policy changes, affirmative governance that gives us a feel-good factor. Our nation is being recognized globally for the progress we have registered. The world bodies, there was a time used to caution us as they are cautioning our neighbors. But now they are showering accolades on us. IMF has indicated India is the fastest global economy in terms of GDP growth when it comes to large economies. We are the fastest ahead of another country in the world at that stage. We are the hot favorite destination of investment and opportunity. And look at the kind of digitization we have had. Transformative change. Unthinkable for a nation that lives largely in villages. 500 million bank accounts have brought about a transformative, unprecedented banking inclusion. Our digital penetration has been acclaimed by the World Bank as a model for others. That what Bharat has achieved in six years is normally not achievable even in 47 years. Friends, we have demonstrated to the world that Indian human resources are genius. And those of you who will be taking a leap no more than I do, there is hardly a corporate in the world that is not benefiting from Indian genius. Coming from institutes like you. But the recognition has come now. And I would therefore urge you to be partner, to be part of India's growth story. Our economy is heading north. And I have no doubt this trajectory will be sustained by people like you, boys and girls. The world has come to know India's presidency of G20. We gave to the world a message of peace, harmony, cultural depth. Look at the motto of G20 we had. One earth, one family, one future. Reflecting what is there in our scriptures, Vasudev Kutamkam. Friends, when a rise like this happens, our success is not digestible in certain quarters. They exist within the country and without. As young minds, you have to be extremely alert. You are discerning minds. Your stakeholder in governance is more than anyone else, given your age profile. And therefore, when you see anti-India narratives, when there is an effort, a mischievous one, to denigrate our institutions, 
to tend to tarnish our image, our silence is no longer desirable. If young minds, impressionable minds, do not act at the moment, their inaction and silence will resonate in your ears in times to come. I have no doubt India is on the rise primarily because of its youth dividend, because of the people like you who are skilled, trained to contribute to the growth trajectory in any manner you feel appropriate. Friends, we all are part of Marathon March of Bharat for Vikshit Bharat 2047. This is heaven. This is a very big yag. This yag is a very big yag. This 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 is a very big yag. जब यज्ञ संपन्न होगा पूर्ण आहुति दी जाएगी भारत विकसित देश होगा एंड यू विल बी इन योर प्राइम यू विल सी भारत इन एब्सोल्यूट ग्लोरी अ ग्लोरी दैट वाज देयर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इयर्स अगो भारत होम टू नॉलेज एंड विजडम होम टू कल्चर एज नो नेशन कैन एवर क्लेम and therefore, I would make some suggestions to you. Those are the suggestions which you alone are in a position to translate into action. My first suggestion, look at our trade deficit, more than 100 billion in some countries. What are we importing? We are importing items that are avoidable. We are importing items that are made in this country. We have a concept of being vocal for local. Sabdeshi. It pains my heart, so would yours. We are importing kites, diyas, candles, furniture, curtains and the kind. And we are doing it for one reason. Some people who import these items manage to make easy money the cozy way. But look at the pain they inflict on Bharatma. Our precious foreign exchange in billions is drained out avoidably. We are snatching hands from our people who could make these items. We are blunting entrepreneurship of people like you who can engage in these activities. I therefore urge all of you to nurture economic nationalism, to ensure that this spirit of economic nationalism is deeply embedded in your mind, in your thought process. You will have multiple occasions to do it when there will be emergence of an ecosystem that, yes, we shall always keep interest of the nation before any other interest. I can't conceive of any fiscal gain, of any dimension whatsoever, the figure may be astronomical in terms of gain. No fiscal gain can be justified when you compromise economic nationalism. Take it as your motto. Friends, I am perturbed, disturbed, when I go to some ports. Our raw material is being exported as such. We are not adding value to our raw material. We are doing the same three things. One, we are declaring to the world we are unable to add value to our raw material. The situation is we have capacity to add value. But then somehow, control of the raw materials, they, they take the easy route. Why should I engage into value addition? You must because it will generate employment. It will generate entrepreneurship. For the same reason, I urge you, appeal to you, to kindly promote value addition in the country. The value addition must be effective. 
and that I am sure will have deep impact on our economy. Friends, you are at a time when you will step out of the country, your passport will speak for yourself. In the Global Committee of Nations, people will confer with you because you are an Indian. They will try to find out from you what opportunities they can have this country. A situation which people of my generation could never even imagine. Friends, when you are living in such a Bharat, you need to put your very best. You have the capacity, you have the opportunity, and the challenge. This is the time for you all to be vigilant, effective, partner of Marathon March of Vixit Bharata 2047. And let me tell you, my young friends, never have tension, never have stress, never fear failure. If Chandrayaan 2 was not there, Chandrayaan 3 would not have made history. Chandrayaan 2 was not failure, it was major success, but not 100%. So every failure is a stepping stone to success. Historically, heavens have never fallen. Why fear them now? Why, why would they fall for you? And there is never the last opportunity. Because if I may be allowed to quote one of the Greek philosophers, pre-Socrates philosophers, Heraclitus, he said, the only change, the only thing constant in life is change. He further reflected, the same person cannot step into the same river twice because neither the person will be the same nor the river will be the same. So you have before you new vistas of opportunities. You have to grab them, and I have no doubt you will make your family, your faculty, your friends, and the nation proud. Of the many inspiring thoughts bequeathed to us, I will end by quoting Chanakya, who said, education is the best friend. An educated person is respected everywhere. You have got it. You are possessed of this ornament. I'll end with another quote from Swami Vivekananda. What he focused on, Swamiji laid considerable emphasis on the importance of persistence and relentless of one's goals. Swami taught us never, be, never to be disheartened. And all this was captured in what he said I caught. Arise, awake, and stop, not till the goal is reached and caught. Ma'am, I am grateful for the opportunity you have made available to me. I am particularly grateful that there is on the dais the next generation who will ably take your baton also. And that will see a big change in the entire working of this institute. That is an excellent principal, director, an illustrious board of governors. My best wishes and good luck to all of you. In this, please don't forget my invite. You are welcome to visit new building of parliament as my guest and you all shall be taken around. Thank you so much. I'm grateful.